Jason John Whitehead. Hi. Good evening. I'm Jay. Hooray. Good to be here. You know, I like your little village. It's cool, you're a nice people. You get some sun. You think it's all cold. I like that. You can't tell a Canadian that it's cold if you're wearing shorts. That's the rules, man. It's nice to hang out with you, though, man. I've, I've never been to a country that has two buttons on the toilet so that you can push a different one depending on how proud you are. <laughs> you've just accomplished. <laughs> You're my kind of people. I've got your priorities. I'm from Eastern Canada. The mullet is natural. I drive a 1993 Ford Escort. <laughs> you can judge me if you want. I could drive a nicer car if I chose to. I make tens of dollars doing this job. <laughs> Love my Ford Escort. It doesn't get me any speeding tickets. It doesn't, but it gives me the illusion of speed. Now you feel like you're going fast when you're in my car, because everything's rattling around inside. I'll have somebody in the passenger seat who's like, holy shit, Jay, the doors are coming off. Yeah, it's because we're going 23 miles an hour, motherfucker. I'll have you in Sydney in two hours from somewhere just outside of Sydney. <laughs> but I didn't bother to memorize. <laughs> yeah, even though I've been here for a week and a half. Somebody likes to drink. <laughs> Or I just realized the joke works anyway. <laughs> a long time ago. <sighs> Penrith. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Thank you and I for making it up for some live entertainment as well. You're the good people, you know? You could have stayed in and watched television. TV is boring and predictable. You know, it is. You've made the good choice. You don't know what can happen in live entertainment. TV, I was watching 24 the other day. Kiefer Sutherland, good Canadian boy that he is, he was told he had a spy at his counter-terrorist unit. <laughs> I could tell who the spy was. It's too easy, man. He comes running in, he's like, fellas, apparently there's a spy in our midst. We have to find out who it is. So quick, Rick, Jeff, Mike, Mustafa, let's get out there. Let's go. We've got to uncover the spy. I'm just watching going, I can tell who it is. This is easy. It's Rick. It's been looking sneaky the whole time. I like doing that joke early on. To see, you know, because you know, not everybody this day and age comes to comedy to laugh. Unfortunately, some people come to be be pissed off, <laughs> to be annoyed, right? You know the kind of people I'm talking about, right? Maybe you dragged them here with you tonight. <laughs> Probably talking to them five hours ago, going, "We're gonna go see some stand-up comedy," and they're on the other end of the phone, going, oh, "Hate comedy. Never, why don't we just go bowling? That'd be funny." I like to call these people dicks. <laughs> so that little first joke, that Mustafa joke, that's my, that's my dick spotter. <laughs> so I throw it out there to see if I can find the judgmental people. And usually as soon as I hit the Mustafa, I can see them off to the side going, oh my God, did you hear what he just said? <laughs> did you hear what he just, he told me, he just said Mustafa, didn't he? <laughs> He's a white guy, and he just said, stop. 
you can't be a white guy and say Mustafa. I, I haven't connected the dots on this one yet, but I'm pretty sure it's racist. I mean, I'm insulted to the core. So, that's why I switched it to Rick. <laughs> Just to make those kind of people racist. <laughs> giving Mustafa such a hard time. He, he earned his place at CTU. What you getting, what you getting, what you getting there? Ooh. What else you got? You said you were just gonna kick back, have your foot up and your bag on my fucking stage? Use the thing as one big makeup counter? <laughs> you spoiled bitch. <laughs> Day planner? You're, it's pretty heavy. You're a busy girl. <sighs> Ashling, is that your name? You're stealing mail from your flatmate? <laughs> Fucking criminal. Oh, it's pink glitter! <laughs> You're an awesome little grungy chick with your, with your blue fucking lumberjack top and your, and your pink glitter. Kitty's got claws. dig any deeper before I pull out something else. <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go, Ashling. What's your name then? Laura. Laura. <laughs> yeah, okay. Don't laugh too hard at that, everybody. <laughs> that, that, that would suck, everybody. Oh, turn it to Laura. Her flatmate's Ashling. Laura Ash, that's it. We climaxed. <laughs> no more comedy now. It's over. We're done. We've made the Laura Ashley call. <laughs> awesome. So what do you guys want to talk about? You don't even care, do you? I've been trying to stay out in the sun since I live in Britain now. They don't have much of that. <laughs> they don't. So you become addicted at indoor things. I've got a gambling problem. <laughs> I'm gonna share with you all. Share, I'll start with the gambling problem. And uh, online poker. Which I quite like. I've got one bugbear though. If you do play online poker, they get you to pick a picture to represent yourself around the poker table. And I generally don't care what you choose as your photo. Put up a picture of yourself or your pets, or your sports team, that's fine. But please, if you're gonna gamble on the internet, don't put up pictures of your children <laughs> to represent you. It's wrong, and I hate staring at a photo of little Timmy, age six, smiling at me all butt tooth fresh from his family barbecue and watching my money slide across the table to the little shit. <laughs> And I understand that it's his parents or his grandparents that have put the picture up there, but it's wrong. Especially considering you can gamble on the internet in the comfort of your own home. Naked. <laughs> As I was doing. A couple months ago when my flatmate came home to see me standing nude in front of a computer screen with pictures of small children on it. <laughs> And I'm yelling at the monitor, come on, I've given you all my money. <laughs> now show me what you got. <laughs> it's awkward. <laughs> You're very sporty people as well, I noticed. You got sport on your television all day. You're even replaying sport from like 1978 and shit. That's a sporty country. 
What do we do? Show, show replays of Seinfeld? No, fuck that. Put the 1978 ashes up or something. <laughs> wow, you guys love it. I, I wish I'd have been here when you hosted the Olympics. Must have scared the snot out of all the visiting countries. They show up and go, oh my God, they are all athletes. <laughs> we don't know who we're competing against. <laughs> I've got to admit to you, sporty people, I'm getting sick of the Olympics. I find it tedious and boring. It's not exciting. I don't care. It's, they're all run too smoothly. People get their medals. It's just, who cares about watching athletes that are perfectly capable of doing the events they've been training their whole lives for? <laughs> Where is the entertainment value in that crap? Everybody pay attention to me, I'm fit as hell and I throw a javelin for miles. Well, good for you. We're fucking bored. We'd rather see some awkward kid stumble up to the line, trip over and stab himself in the thumb of the bottom thing. Entertain us, goddammit. 100 meter dash would fit people, get rid of that right now and just give us eight fat dudes. Just, <laughs> just tripping over each other, chasing after a biscuit on a string or something. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see eight people that have never run 100 meters in their lives. <laughs> Blindfold them and have midgets whip them down the track. I say this because that, 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 unbelievably, of all the material that I do, that bit angered a woman recently and uh, she tried to verbally accost me after the show and uh, she's getting very aggressive. You're an asshole. You're, how can you say that about Olympians? They have determination and perseverance. I was like, holy shit, lady, you missed the pedophile joke or what? <laughs> I can't say that about athletes. <laughs> Perseverance, if you to be like that. She just started getting really aggressive, right? She gets in my face, right? In my face, not on my face, in my face. <laughs> in, in. She gets in my face and starts going, because you also, you Canadians, you're the drug cheats. <laughs> yeah. And I went, oh, okay, fine. This goes back to 1988, which is true. I think Canadians, we do try the drugs first. <laughs> We try them, and then the Americans perfect them. <laughs> I think we are that little guinea pig for them up north. Will it work? I don't know. Give it to the Canadians. Because, <laughs> yes, we had Ben Johnson. He did a little bit of drugs. But do you guys remember how fucking fast he went? <laughs> was in the air 20 meters for any other dude even cross the line. <laughs> drugs are good, man. To embrace drug use. Our snowboarder gets his gold medal taken away because he was high on marijuana. <laughs> I don't think he was cheating. <laughs> he was challenging himself. <laughs> I want my athletes on drugs. I want athletes and rock stars. Get on your drugs now and entertain us. I'm sick of there being a line. I've heard it before. You know, parents are telling me, but the kids, the children, we can't, children look up to athletes. We can't do this to the children. Don't tell them. It's that easy. If we're gonna keep Santa Claus from them, we can sure as hell keep why Ben Johnson could run 100 meters in two seconds from him. <laughs> Let the children dream! And let them make a choice when they turn 17. That's the way it should work, man. You know, don't we all want to see a swimmer who actually looks like a fish? <laughs> you know, dude who looks like a horse and throws a hammer. We would all watch the hammer throwing it out. When I hear the announcer at the sprint coat, there he is, smoke coming out of his ass. Oh, he shattered the world record. Ah, oh, he's dead now. <laughs> what a legend. 
That's my Olympic dream. Maybe I shouldn't talk too much about drug use on Easter. You guys really don't care, do you? Yeah, no, you're the people that are here. I've always been scared of Easter, actually. I've never, never liked Easter. Um, I never liked Easter because I'm circumcised. <laughs> you guys haven't made the connection yet? All right, I'll try to explain. When I was a kid, I realized that I had been circumcised. My mom tried to explain to me that it had been done by the rabbi. And now being quite young at this point and having a little bit of an imagination and not to mention not being Jewish. <laughs> kind of led myself to believe the rabbi meant more than one rabbit. <laughs> Scared to death of rabbits coming. Afraid these furry little fuckers with flick knives are gonna finish me off. So that's why I hated Easter. <laughs> Playing these things on my mom. Good Canadian mom, probably similar to an Australian mom, you know, we got big wide open countries. So I think family gets kind of tight, you know. And my mom doesn't like me traveling around the world telling jokes. She just wants to scare me into coming home. <laughs> she thinks that'll work. She found out I'm coming to Sydney. I said, I'm going to Sydney, Mom. Sydney, Australia. I just read about that place. <laughs> Two Canadians get murdered there every year. <laughs> and only one has been killed so far this year. <laughs> so you think about that, young man. <laughs> Oh, she all screwed my head. She used to tell me that masturbation was wrong and perverse and that every time you masturbate, your dead relatives are watching. <laughs> what kind of way is that for you to find out all your dead relatives are perverts? <laughs> so I blamed, I had trouble with women, maybe it's the mothering thing, with all the, all the problems with women that I ever had. I, 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 I don't know. I used to think I was only good at breaking up with women, you know, actually. I, okay, this one time, right? This girl I was going out with, right? She told me she was sleeping with somebody else. So I came over the top and said, oh yeah, well, you're dumped. <laughs> Which means that I win. At the time, it had me thinking a lot about what I wanted in my next girlfriend, and to be honest, I still wasn't sure what I wanted in my next girlfriend, but I did know what I didn't want in my next girlfriend, and that's other people's cocks. <laughs> so onwards and upwards. It's a long roll, though. It's weird, because uh, now that I, I do this, I got comedians for friends as well, and uh, they're not supportive you know, in the dating game, you know, they all do their best to stay single, force each other to be single for material wise, you know, which I am not single anymore. I've beaten my comedy friends as much as they tried to keep me down, you know, and it was a long road too. I went through a bad breakup and I remember being at a nightclub with my comedy friends and seeing a girl who looked like my ex-girlfriend. I needed a shoulder to lean on. I said, oh, she's just like my ex-girlfriend, only she's getting together with that guy. And of course, comedian friends will just lean in and go, nah, man, she's nothing like your ex-girlfriend. Your ex-girlfriend would be fucking him by now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good laugh. I like that one. That, oh! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> It's a fun job though, man. I thoroughly enjoy this job, you know. Traveling around and occasionally getting in shit. It's the best job I ever had. I remember not having a job, you know. I remember searching for a job. And for anybody who is unemployed in the current economic climate, it can be difficult. I remember I was getting turned down for jobs that I didn't even remember applying to. <laughs> That kind of hurts when they send you a letter saying, we don't require your services, and you're like, I don't remember asking. 
I was about 20 years old, and I remember I decided to take a page out of these fuckers' books. And I started calling up places and telling them that I didn't want to work for them. <laughs> and I called this one hotel and uh, told them I didn't want to work for them. They put me through to the manager, and he asked me if I wouldn't mind changing my mind. <laughs> So it's a strategy for anybody out there <laughs> who wants a job, man. Well, this is the best job. This is a great job. Traveling around the world. Like I said, I get in shit. I got the worst ever heckling battle I've ever been in in Manila, in the Philippines, at a gig that had people on the balcony with machine guns. <laughs> Wasn't really the place where I wanted to get into an argument, <laughs> but it just, it just happened, right? Because, I, I mean, the gig was all right. It was all right, right? But it, like you could expect from a gig in Manila, it was half full of women of the night. <laughs> and, you know, and Australian and English people, you know, making their money tax-free, living above the law a little bit, you know, thinking that they rule the world. In the middle of this, this woman, this Scottish woman, gets up, she starts heckling me, she gets out of control. I'm just trying to close off my set. And she just wouldn't back down. As much as I shut her down in a clever fashion, she still wouldn't back down. So I might regret this, and it might have been a little too strong, but I finally chose to say, listen, shut up, you whore. <laughs> Which was maybe strong language in the situation, because with that one statement, I managed to offend half the men in the room <laughs> and all of the whores. <laughs> she shut up, though, and went away, and the gig went back to normal, and I was just trying to close things up so I could move on my way. And then this voice comes from the back of the room, just this voice back by the sound, it's going, Oi! Get the fuck off my stage! And I was like, holy shit, dude. It's a hard enough gig already. I'm trying to get off the stage. I had a little bit of a distraction there. What are you talking about your stage? And he yells back at me in the darkness. I'm the sponsor of this gig, and you just called my wife a whore! <laughs> So you can find yourself in an awkward situation every now and then. Went back out on the balconies, and she was there in the balcony trying to, trying to wind me up, trying to get in my face. She picked what, I think what many people think, can cut straight to the bones of a comedian. She goes, yeah, you must think you're, you must, you must hate your life because you're a comedian, but you're not famous yet. Because all comedians want to be famous. People who think that this is going to get under our skin blow my mind. I don't care about being famous in 2010. I think I've realized if I want to be famous, you know, you can try and put clips up on YouTube, but you can get famous if instead you just shit in a bucket <laughs> on YouTube and recite some of your jokes. Be famous. Comedians just want to be famous. You missed the point. That's like saying, ooh, pedophiles, they just want to get on a register. <laughs> Skip the whole reason why we do this. <laughs> Missing the point, man. So now, I gotta tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I have been. I've, uh, I've beaten my comedian friends. I've got a lady friend, as much as they try to keep her away from me. And uh, we've been together for four years. Yeah, I know. Impressive, isn't it? I haven't won an argument in 48 months. <laughs> It's all right, but I, I'm sick of her, though. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Kind, kind of. Somebody asked me the other day if I remember what it was like to be single, and do I miss casual sex? I was like, shit, man. I've been with the same woman for four years. Sex doesn't get any more casual <laughs> than the shit that we got going on. <laughs> You're trying to wedge a shag in between letting the rice settle and her finishing her Sudoku puzzle? <laughs> Getting pretty fucking casual with that. She was wearing a mini skirt and boots the other night, and I said, baby, you're looking sexy tonight. You're turning me on. And uh, she looked at her watch. 
looked at me, rolled up the mini skirt, bent over the couch, and said, fine. <laughs> fine, I'll give you five minutes, big boy. <sighs> I was a little too casual. <laughs> But luckily, it was the moment when I thought of this joke. So I just left her there, bent over the couch, and I went into the next room to write it down. <laughs> Sometimes love is cruel, man. She stormed back in the room to start a fight with me, get in my face. She goes, oh yeah, well, I'm gonna outlive you. Are you ladies aware of this? Did you know that you live longer than us? On average, you ladies live four years longer than us. On average, you ladies live to be 78. And on average, we die when we're 74, which I think sucks. Because as much as we can love you ladies, it would be nice to know that eventually we could have some time to ourselves. <laughs> so no offense, but I wish we'd all die sooner. All right, I've put my toes in the water several times over this set, and every time I have, I've thought, ooh, it's a bad idea to tell the story that I'm going to tell now. <laughs> I don't know why my instincts do this. <laughs> Even the voice in my head is going, these guys aren't gonna like it that much. But I'm going, ah, fuck it. <laughs> I wanna tell you guys a little story that has the word retarded in it. <laughs> Please don't jump to any conclusions. Please don't get all squirmy. We're all adults in here. I think we can handle the word. I know that some people get very uppity at language in this day and age. I've got friends that get all worked up about the use of the word retarded, even though it has an accurate description and a true use, you know? I'm not gonna say it in a slanderous or mean way. Retarded, okay? I was at my friend's house who hates these, this language, right? Everything's all these buzzwords. Doesn't like hearing them mentioned. I was at his house and my computer died. My computer dies, and it was a computer that was really pissing me off. It was getting old anyway, a little bit beyond its time. Let's just say it wasn't keeping up with the world around it. <laughs> <laughs> so my computer dies in front of my buddy, and I went, oh, my computer is retarded. He got silent, and his insane wife comes storming in from the next room, stamp right, excuse me. We do not use that language under this roof. I was like, what, retarded? She's like, yes, I do not use mean words like that. I'm like, it's not, words can't be mean. It's the way that you use it that's mean. She's like, still, still, we do not use that kind of language. We prefer to use the words mentally challenged. <laughs> or mentally disabled. So I just looked at her and I looked at my dead computer. And I said, fine. My computer is mentally challenged. <laughs> you retard. <laughs> now, that's not the story. <laughs> it's gonna be, this is going to be fun. Um, before I, I'll tell you this little joke, right? A little joke. It's a little joke. Might as well. I'll let you through the. I'll let you through the veil. But it's a little joke. It's gonna have a callback in the story. So let's have a little joke. Let's be fun. <laughs> if you are gonna go to a strip club tonight, I've got some advice. If you want to save some money, which is this: try to find the deaf stripper, because she might not know exactly when the song ended. <laughs> You just gotta keep moving. <laughs> keep moving, she won't notice. Then her friend will have to come over and tell her to stop. And that can get angry sometimes. And that's like a two for one. <laughs> that's my advice for everybody. Now, having said that, here we go. Um, me and a buddy of mine, uh, an English, English mate of mine, we went to Disneyland. I don't know why you would do this in your 30s. <laughs> but he had never been to Disneyland, and I had never taken a 30-year-old man to Disneyland. 
who seemed that he would be so excited to go. So I went, let's go! So we took off to Disneyland, and on our first day, um, we went to this place called the Six Islands of Adventure or something. And we showed up at the Islands of Adventure uh, quite drunk. And it was quite late in the afternoon. And the staff... Now, okay, before I carry on with this, I just want to explain that I do not condone any of the behavior that takes place in this story. <laughs> Even though it was us. <laughs> so we rocked up to the islands. And the staff at the island said, um, actually, we're closing. Uh, we're closing in, in about 50 minutes. So, uh, you know, you might want to think again. And we thought, well, we've come all this way. We want to capitalize. So what did we do in order to cut all the cues? Yes. <laughs> yes, we pretended to be retarded. <laughs> <laughs> and we were really good at it. <laughs> My friend got in the wheelchair. I played care. It was awesome. We went on like the Popeye ride four times in the 50 minutes. It was wicked. And my buddy even got a free bag of cotton candy from the staff. So <laughs> we pulled it off. Baby. <laughs> we went back to the hotel that night and we discussed our behavior. You know, because there was times when we were a little bit too hardcore, you know? We could see that they were letting us cut ahead of the queue, but like little six-year-old boys were, were losing out on a chance to get on the ride. And we're like just going like, fuck you, little Timmy, you learn how to act. <laughs> yeah, and tell your mom she sucks at poker. <laughs> So, so we discussed our behavior at the hotel and we thought, yes, we were a little bit over the line. Maybe we should do something to make up for our behavior so karma can call it even, you know? Maybe we could give some money to a disabilities charity somewhere in the Orlando area and that will offset what we had done. But we couldn't find a deaf stripper. <laughs> in the Orlando area. <laughs> so we thought the best and most respectful thing for us to do would be to go back to being regular tourists, okay? And the plan the next day was very straightforward. It was to go to a water park in the morning and then Disneyland at night, okay? Simple plan for simple people. But that morning in the water park, my friend Seymour, the one who was pretending to be retarded, <laughs> broke his foot in the wave pool. How do you break your foot in a wave pool? I'll tell you how, cause there is some sort of God watching you. And he was looking down on us going, you were pretending to be retarded last night, weren't you? Shabam, broken foot for you, jackass. Seymour's holiday is ruined. He's miserable. He just wants to go back to the hotel, sit on the bed and watch American television. But I was like, no way. Screw you, dude. We already bought the tickets for Disneyland. You're getting in the wheelchair and we're going. <laughs> so we took Seymour to the medical center at Epcot Center, right? And uh, they gave him a shitload of drugs. And then we gave him a shitload more drugs. <laughs> so Seymour slouched over in a wheelchair, drooling on himself. He can hardly put two words together, let alone form a sentence. And now we're pushing him around Disneyland, looking like something out of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And I wasn't doing anything to help the situation. I was having a lot of fun with it. I was like parking him in the corner, facing the wall and yelling at him. Like, yeah, and you know what? You can come out when you know what you did wrong, right? <laughs> the American staff are all running over to me going, this is right, you shouldn't be doing this. Seymour's yelling back at me, stop doing this to me, right? But he couldn't form a sentence because of all the drugs. He was all fucked up. So all the American Disneyland staff started to assume that he was retarded. 
he got another free bag of candy and a kiss from Snow White. It's a true story. Lucky bastard. So. <laughs> so now I got the lady friend, she won't let me go to Disney with Seymour anymore. supposed to be embarking on a new phase of life. <laughs> Boring one. <laughs> she used to be pretty slutty too. <laughs> oh look, okay, look, I don't mean this in a bad way. She's my girlfriend, man. But I think there's a lot to be said for people of loose morals. <laughs> men and women in here. I don't know, what are Australians like? Are you guys, you're a little bit conservative? No, you're, you're slut. <laughs> really? Australia, yeah? You're here with your wife and you're like, yeah, man. <laughs> We're all over the place. Was that, was that you that said sluts? Was that? Yeah? Oh, you're in shit now. <laughs> you were having a blast up until that. Why do I fucking shake my head at that? Never go, no, no. How clean and pure. You should have said, what other women? <laughs> really? So, no, because I figure Australian, you're quite, I don't know, well behaved. Wow, you really want to, okay, fine. All right. Well, okay, North Americans, where I'm from. What do you think? Conservative, right? <laughs> Have you guys ever been outside of this room? <laughs> you guys know, just kind of locked in? <laughs> Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, that's true. But I don't know if they're sluts. <laughs> it's a different kind of thing, isn't it? It's kind of just trash. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's fair enough. I don't know, I think of Europeans as a little bit looser in the morals category than I think from what I see from Australians. And let me, okay, let me try to explain this, right? I live in Britain now, okay? There's English people in, isn't there? Where are the English people? Yeah? What are you guys like? <laughs> Slutty, aren't you? <laughs> English people are extremely loose in the morals category. <laughs> but proud of it. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant, man. I love coming on stage on, in Britain. You can actually call them sluts and they just go, yeah. <laughs> if I ever did that in America or somewhere else, not only would I I'd be lying, but you'd be able to feel the offense in the room, right? American women just going, oh my God, did he just call us a slut? <laughs> totally, Sydney, I'm insulted to the core. He can't get away with saying that about us. I know, Jennifer. Comedians want to be our friends. What, you satire or something? I don't find it funny at all. I want my money back. Fuck that, Sydney. It's fucking America. Let's sue our assumption. <laughs> Yet the whole fact that you're not even offended that I said that to you, you're still going, yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, I've been out with American women and I've been out with European women. <laughs> and the experience was very different. I'm sure the, first, the night after a first date with an American woman, I would imagine the conversation with her friends probably went something like this. I went out with Jason last night and everything, and we were like staying in the lineup to go to the movies, and he tried to hold my hand, but I wasn't wearing gloves or anything, so that was totally gonna be skin on skin contact on a first date, and I don't think he has any right to know the texture of my skin on a first date, because that's more like a third date kind of thing. He has to earn that right. I don't know if I wanna go out with him again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and conversely, I've been out with English women. I've got one as a girlfriend, and I'm pretty sure the night after her first date, the conversation with her friends probably went something like this. I went out with Jason last night, and I fucked him, but I don't know if I want to go out with him again. <laughs> Funny, because it's true. So, um, my English girlfriend is Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and uh, yeah. I never even thought that would be funny the first time I said it. But the audience has started laughing, so I'm like, all right, I guess that's how I do that from now on. Born and raised in Britain to Vietnamese parents, so Vietnamese, but British. <laughs> Best of both worlds. <laughs> when I'm on the phone with her, I'm going out with some sort of English slut. <laughs> and then when I'm out with her, cute little Vietnamese girl. She makes me look like a racist, though. I'm getting sick of it. I'll explain. <laughs> she obviously looking at me going, well, that shouldn't be difficult. Man with a mullet who drives a Ford Escort. Wearing a motorhead shirt. <laughs> All right, I'll explain how she makes me look like a racist. Right? Her and her Vietnamese friends who speak English, right? They're all English and that. Like any culture that has words that used to oppress them, basically what you do to take the power out of those words is you use them in public, right? We understand the process. We've heard a hip hop album. We know how it's done. So my Vietnamese girlfriend and her friends, they've got such words, words that used to oppress them. So they use them in public, take away the power. There we go, progress. My problem is they use them around me. Words that I would never mutter myself. And they use them around me and they get me in shit because idiots overhear the words and the idiots come around the corner going, my oh my, who could be speaking such racist language? <laughs> then they see my girlfriend and her friends and they go, can't be them. They don't speak English. <laughs> Must be that white asshole. <laughs> Getting out of the Ford Escort. Okay, I'll give you a specific example, all right? A specific example of when this has really got to me, because me and my girlfriend, we were in the hospital recently, right? Because sometimes she doesn't listen. And <laughs> we're. <laughs> Just show it, just <laughs> well, we were in the hospital uh, because uh, her sister had just had a baby. Her lovely sister just had a baby with another white man like myself. Me and the father of the child, we were the only two white dudes in the whole hospital reception room. Then there's like the whole, the, her whole family, like 20 of them. That, that, sorry to do that with my hands. They're, they, they're all tiny. <laughs> They're all, I'm not making a sweeping generalization of a nation here. I'm just talking about this fam, the, the Wen family. They're, okay, look, I, all right, my girlfriend's five foot two. She's one of the tallest in the, <laughs> look, all right, would it help if I just said that they wouldn't get on any rides? Is that nicer? <laughs> so I'm there with my adopted family that uh, wouldn't get on any rides. They were very excited to welcome this newborn baby into the world, but they were using language that I found extremely offensive because they're, they're running up to each other with the baby in their hands, saying, saying quite casually, right? My girlfriend's name is Chow, by the way. So, so Chow and her sister's Quinn, and uh, Chow and Quinn, so they're both holding the baby right up to her. She's beautiful, isn't she? But she doesn't look as cheeky as I thought she'd look. I really, I really thought she'd look a lot more cheeky. Didn't you think she'd be more cheeky, Chow? I did think she'd be more cheeky, Quinn. I can't believe she's not that cheeky, right? And then Granddad comes in, who's lived in Hackney in East London for like 45 fucking years. So he's got a strong Hackney accent. He casually goes, yeah, I knew she had some white in her, but I thought she'd be all chinked up too in it, right? <laughs> Orderlies are walking past the door, getting mad at me and the father thinking that we've just found this room just to be a couple of white assholes. <laughs> so I had to put an end to it, and I stormed up to my girlfriend, and I said, baby, can you please get your family to stop throwing around the term chinky? It's highly offensive, and it's hugely inaccurate, because you guys are all Vietnamese. <laughs> you would be called gooks. <laughs> So, uh, so that's my situation. So uh, now you guys kind of know me well. <laughs> you know, but, 
that's me in a nutshell. But, uh, I do love her. I love her. Uh, you know, just for a bit while I'm hanging out here. But uh, you know, Australian hospitality is making up for most things. You know, guys are good and fun. I don't know if I'd want to live with you though. As much as I like being here, I like my life in other parts of the world where ice cream is a choice. <laughs> I have a strong feeling that you guys have to have it. <laughs> He's overheating! Well, has he had his daily ice cream? No, he hasn't! <laughs> get it in him. <laughs> but she's lovely. We do get, we do get in the, I don't know, all the couples in here tonight, you know, a couple of people, you know, be good to each other. Don't withhold sex from one another. <laughs> I hate hearing about that. I met a couple and the woman told me she was withholding sex because he forgot her birthday. It's a punishment. I tried to explain to her that just she needs sex to get that information out of him. <laughs> you ladies don't know this, but we don't function that well unless we're getting sex. The information is in there. We can't get it out because we're generally all clogged up with man fluid. <laughs> I tried to explain to her the second that she sleeps with him, he will show that he's got the information. He will turn to her in bed and go, thank you for that. Your middle name is Catherine. Your birthday is April 14th. And your favorite color is pink. Thank you for releasing me from that jism prison. <laughs> so, so be good to each other. I mean, I got, I got, a, like, I got, I get in trouble for looking at another woman's breasts just before we left. Um, the weird thing is that it wasn't even my girlfriend, it was her friend, and she told me to look at the breasts. We were hanging out in the park, you know, just catching some grey skies. <laughs> Talking about, Ooh, what's it gonna be like in Australia? Hanging out in the park, and her friend just goes, but you look at that slut. Now, I obliged. <laughs> I was just doing guy stuff, you know, thinking about the Terminator or something. So, <laughs> so I, I've got time to multitask. <laughs> so I took in the slut. I didn't know that I was supposed to do the girl thing, which you ladies seem to analyze everything. You capture everything and then you're able to turn away, you know? Like you can go, did you see that asshole? Yes, the one wearing the green shoes with the cut off jeans. And, Oh, that and the birthmark on his neck there. And I, I don't know, how do you do that? We need to stare at the shit in order to get it down. And even when we do, we've still got, what, uh, was it pink? So, pink shirt, maybe? Shit, wrong. So I'm still staring at her all the way across until eventually my eyes met her friend and, and the friend, my friend as well. She just goes, you're being a typical man, Jason, typical man tonight. You think bigger breasts are better than little breasts, you typical. And this is what I would like to clear up on behalf of the ladies in the room. Or, sorry, on behalf of the men in the room. <laughs> well, sure, maybe the ladies too. <laughs> Many lesbians in. <laughs> this is what I would like to clear up on behalf of the men in the room. Ladies, to us, breast size is not as important as you might think. To us, breast size is a lot like Coke or Pepsi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to us, breast size is a lot like Coke or Pepsi in that we might state a preference, but we will take whatever's on tap. <laughs> as long as it's not flat. <laughs> it's been a pleasure hanging out with you. Thanks a lot. Have yourself a good winter, all right? Jason John White, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. Bang!